I'm John Hanson with Mobile Auto Service. And what I want to explain to you today is the different types of carburetors we have and when while you're cleaning them at home, why you're having such a problem. There's so many little intricate parts of a carburetor and people don't realize, hey, I cleaned this, I sprayed it out with brake clean and it still doesn't work and they're extremely frustrated and don't know why. First, let's go over the different types of carburetors. You have your typical uh, single barrel carburetor. This would be for a motorcycle, a four wheeler, a small engine. You have a two barrel carburetor, which typically has two barrels. That's why it's called a two barrel, single barrel, one, one barrel for the fuel to flow through in the air. You also have a four barrel carburetor. You can see there's four holes and this is a uh, four barrel, so you have four chambers for the gas to come through. Now, why people uh, have a hard time cleaning carburetors is when you open a carburetor up. So this carburetor sits together like this. And you take it apart and you open it up. What happens is the fuel sits in the bottom of the bowl here. And as the fuel sits in the bottom of the bowl, it gets old, it turns into like a turpentine, it gets thick like molasses and then it corrodes up over years and years and years. Well, what people don't realize is if you don't get in all those nooks and crannies and take every single piece of this carburetor apart, you will not get it clean. And what happens in these jets are these jets have a serious tiny little hole in them. And that's actually a really big hole for this jet here. However, you have jets that are half the size. When they're half the size, literally a grain of sand can mess up your carburetor and keep it from running properly. You have floats. If your float gets stuck, this float sits on a hinge and goes up and down in the carburetor as the carburetor fills with fuel. And you can actually see the gas line on this float and how it sat over time and it stained the float. So as it sits there with fuel in it, when the float, when the bowl gets full of gas and the float comes up, it actually shuts off the fuel so that it just doesn't keep pouring fuel into your carburetor. Now, one of the things that happens are these can get uh, damaged as you're pulling them out. People don't realize how sensitive they are. If this little tab right here, there's just a tiny tab on the end of there, gets bent just a little bit, and I'm talking a very little bit, like a 32nd of an inch, it will not shut off when it's supposed to. They're very intricate, they're very delicate, there is a lot of moving parts in them that people don't understand how they work, and they think, you know what, I'm just gonna pull it apart, spray the bowl out, and that's good enough. That's not where your real problem is. Your real problem tends to be in the jets and uh, in, in the needle valves. Like this, this is a needle valve that uh, controls the airflow mixture. So gas airflow mixture going through the car. If that chamber isn't cleaned out all the way, it's not going to run right. I've seen them where the the points of the needle valves get full of like that tur turpentine molasses type material and they clog up and they just don't work. So it's not that you guys aren't good, it's not that you don't know, it, it's this is a very intricate piece of equipment and without it being completely clean correctly, it will not work for you. So when you need that carburetor to work, don't forget to send it to us here.